100% goodness, divinity, if you will. 100% positive energy. What we experience as negative is a result of that energy moving into this world, creating a, a, a backdraft, if you will, a mirror imaging. All right, so multiplication tables are straight lines or they're circles. Now, that creates, notice my doubling never breaks. One, two, four, eight, seven, five. Let's go out one more. Two, four, eight, seven, five, one, right? Four, eight, seven, five, one, two. They're changing position, even though they're, they're really not. I'm just looking at different controls. But my doubling circuits are always in a one-way flow. They're always moving like this. Doesn't matter where I start, even if I start with my one, here I'm going one, two, four, eight, seven, five. It's, it's uh, never breaks this one way flow. Even though this energy, I say, it moves omnidirectionally. In other words, it comes from the center of everything out, from the center of every atom, from the center of the earth, from the center of the solar system. Any body of mass, any uh, body of mass in equilibrium has this energy coming out of its center and synchronizing everything that's connected to its body. All right? The earth could be an example of that. Um, so as this energy comes out in all directions, it's pulsing everything forward. It's also causing disintegration. What you could observe in some cases is radioactive decay, which is based on doubling or half-life. Um, it's why everything, this is why we always have to eat to stay alive. Um, because it's a systemic living system. It can never, the last thing you want it to do is to back up. Okay? Uh, backing up is the equivalent of death. Um, it puts an end to the positive flow. So let me show you in my book here, again, I'm sorry for these poor illustrations, just finally what we have here and what I'm trying to explain to you and show you on the symbol. And then we're going to move to a better, uh, more dimensionalized model. Okay, so just a few things, final things we could explain. Here I'm showing controls. Okay, so this is what I was just explaining. My first one is in multiples of one, so I have my nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The same thing you're seeing on the symbol up there. I could just as easily do a control of two, two, four, six, eight, one, three, five, seven, nine. Notice my doubling circuits never break. I still have one, two, four, eight, seven, five, moving in the same direction. All right. I could have four, eight, three, seven, two, six, one, five, nine, multiples of four. Still my doubling circuits, one, two, four, eight, seven, five. Still moving in the same direction. I could do eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, nine. Still one, two, four, eight, seven, five, one, two. It's always moving in the same positive flow direction. All right? These are examples of what I mean when I say you can't move it in the other way. Because if I do, I never get my multiplication tables. Look here. Here I would have it, instead of, instead of going in this positive flow, I'd be going backwards. One, two, four, eight, seven, five. Well, I still have a doubling circuit. I still even have my numbers equaling my field. I still have my polar number pairs, but what's the problem? I even still could model my family number groups. But if you go around the perimeter of the circle, I no longer have a valid multiplication series. This is not any of the multiplication series. Okay. This is just another example of one that wouldn't work. Um, even though they're equaling the field and everything is, I still have no multiplication series around my circle. So you must account for every single principle in the circle. Let's see what else I have here. Because this is what it's doing. And I'm going to show you this in the numbers. Ultimately, this right here is how these numbers are modeling motion. It's something coming in at the top, it's inverting, shooting out the bottom, coming back around in a living, stemic vortex. Okay? All right. So again, it's modeling this motion out at the bottom, in at the top, inverting, just like this. 
it is, um, let me show you how that occurs in the numbers. Because all this is, is a perfect waveform. Anytime you have a waveform, you're going to have nodal points, crests, dips, okay, hills and valleys, curves and curls. And anytime you have nodal points, you got a number. So every time you have a crest in your wave, you've got a number. All right, and that's what these numbers really are. Again, you can call them stationary vector interstices if you want to give it a pompous sounding name or a, a, high, a high science word. Okay, let's look at how these numbers are making a vortex really quick. So here in my first stage, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's going to happen in my second stage? Well, you notice my 2 just goes up. My 7, it just goes up. In fact, my 4 just goes up. 4 goes up here next to 2. My 5 goes straight up next to 5. But what happens to my 8 and 1? Well, if you look, my 8 ends up over here. My 1 ends up over here. Because what happened is they actually inverted. All right, what if I go to my next stage? Well, then notice my 8 just goes straight up. My 1. It just goes straight up, all right? Um, I could say the same thing. My, my 4 and my 5 that were here just went straight up. I know this is a little confusing to look at, but you have to go look at it from stage to stage. But if I have, say, my 2 and 7, whenever they reach the top on my next stage, notice 2's over here, 7's over here. So what they're doing as they multiply is making a vortex. It's coming in every third it inverts okay whenever it crosses the center whenever these numbers cross the zero or cross through the hole they invert they turn upside down they reverse the mirror image and that is what this is modeling okay so i've accounted for all the principles we had we've got family number groups we have got reciprocals Multiplying, dividing, we've got addition and subtraction, which is how things get, by the way, a positive or a negative uh, as a sign symbol that we're familiar with. This energy is what imparts the positive motive momentum to everything. It is a positive force, right? which, is, which is ultimately what everything is based on. It's creating a duality which is really part of a trinity. You could think of the three and six as male and female. Again, in the arrow, the straight line towards the balanced equilibrium of the six. All right. So, oh, right. One more thing I should do, powers of 10. I don't have a board for that, but I think everyone will be able to follow me. Um, this was the last thing of our symbol, just to be a little more thorough, powers of 10. Because not only am I showing doubling here, but I'm showing, you know, when you draw numbers, when you have 100, 1,000, 10,000, we put the comma with every third number. That's not just arbitrary. Numbers themselves aren't just arbitrary. We don't have 10, base 10, because we count on 10 fingers. These numbers are actually conditions for creation. All right, they're, they're not only just quantities, but they're qualities. They have aspects, they have uh, ratios. Everything in number is an angle and a ratio. In other words, where is it moving? What's its direction of travel? And how much of it is there? Angle and ratio. Um, so, what was I saying? Oh, powers of 10. So, if I take one, then I have one. Half of 1 is 0.5, right? But really what we're doing is, this is really 1 over 1. This is going to be 5 over 10. So I'm going to have my 10s place here, 0.5. Then I'm going to go to 0.25, which is really 0.25 hundredths. Or it wouldn't be 0.25, but it'd be 25 hundredths. Then I have 0.125, which is thousandths. 0.0625, which is 10 thousandths, again, aligned with my 10. Then I'm going to go to 100 thousandths, which is aligned with my 100. Then I'm going to go to a millionth, 